downturn. So I live in South Florida. We got a massive problem. I'll give you my personal example. I think this is important. I think it's good to have a president that's lived through some of these things, okay? I bought a house in 2005 from Mike. You know, we now have four kids. We bought a house. 2005. By 2007, not, I've done nothing wrong, nothing. In fact, we kind of fixed it up even more. That house had lost 30 or 40% of its value. So a lot of Americans you know, hit the housing downturn, hit the loss of value in their homes, and they either walked away or couldn't make their payments. Now you got hit with foreclosure. That's on your record for at least seven years. So now you've got a problem with your credit. If you have a student loan, even if you're making the payments, it hurts you. That hurt me. Because the banks would say your income to debt ratio is too high. Like you're, you're, you have this hundred thousand dollar loan sitting there. So and it's not secured against anything. Because if, it, if it's a hundred thousand dollar loan on a piece of property, you might have equity in it. How do you have equity in a student loan? So that's a real impediment as well. And then there's a lot of things happening at the local level with local regulations and zoning that makes it difficult to build affordable housing. I mean, everybody wants. It's easy to go out and build the high-rise condos that are expensive or the multi-million-dollar mansions. That's, but but you've got to have a commitment to also building workforce housing stock that people can afford to buy. And so there's a tax credit program that helps. We need to revisit that and ensure that that we're incentivizing people to develop that sort of housing as well. I mean, you're always going to build the half-million-dollar houses, but you need to build some of the $150,000 housing as well. And it's not just for ownership. Sometimes it's for rental. That'll always be a key part of it too. But I think when it comes to the interest, uh, when it comes to the mortgages, the ish, interest are historically interest rates are historically low right now. But people are still having access, and it's going to get harder. This is a little complicated, but I'm going to walk you through it in about 30 seconds. The lowering of gas of oil prices has been a positive at the pump, but it's starting to have a secondary impact. And that's here's what it is. A lot of these banks and financial institutions lent a lot of money to oil exploration businesses. And that's as individuals that were going out and drilling holes in the ground when gas, when oil was at 80 or $90 a barrel. Mm -hmm. Now it's at 40. I don't know what it is this morning, 35 to 45. And so now these banks are starting to say, holy smoke, we got billions of dollars in loans to these companies who are losing money because of Saudi overproduction. They may not be able to pay back their loans. So what happens when a bank thinks they may have a bunch of bad loans on their hands? They stop lending. They got to pull back and wait. And that's going to trigger a recession if that happens. Um, so it's a multifaceted issue. I also think that Federal Reserve has done tremendous damage to this country. We've become a suspect. Federal Reserve is a central bank. Their job is not to run the economy. And they're always messing around with the interest rates. That's what created the first housing bubble. That's what's created the Wall Street bubble now. Because when interest rates are, are, are low, no one puts their money in the bank. Why would you? If you're an investor for zero interest, instead they put their money in Wall Street. And so it inflates the price of stock artificially high. Now you're seeing a correction in the early part of this year. But you know who it's wiping out? A lot of the retirees I run into. They don't play the stock market. They put their money in a savings account and they're paying the bank. They're paying the bank because they're getting no interest, but they get hit with fees every month, 50 bucks, 30 bucks. You add it up, you paid the bank to deposit your money. For that, you just leave it under the mattress. Well, that's, that's, that's another factor that we've been facing with interest rates being so unpredictable. So it's multifaceted. The president can't solve all of them, but you do need a president that understands it and ensures that government isn't doing anything to make it harder for people to acquire home ownership. 